friends! Today is going to be my reading wrap up for the month of January. In the month of January I read a total of five books with a total of 2,010 pages and we are going to start at the lowest rated book and work our way up and just kind of go through what I read and how I felt about it. As always I will leave linked in the description box below my full reviews on Goodreads if you want to dive deeper into my thoughts. I kind of try to just hit like the main points but if you want full thought out thoughts then in the description box below you will find all of my links for these books on Goodreads. Let's get started. The first book that we're going to talk about is The Wives by Taryn Fisher. It is a book about a girl named Thursday and she is in a polygamous marriage with this guy and like he has a previous wife and then a wife after her and essentially she the, the wives all know about each other but they don't live together. The middle wife thinks that the new wife is being abused and so she tries to get together with the old wife to try to help the new wife and it's a whole spiel from there. It is a mystery. It is not a murder mystery but it is a mystery. It is a thriller. I gave it a four out of five stars. I read this as part of Beautifully Bookish Bethany's Patreon book club and I think I liked it a lot better than everyone else in the book club. The first half of the book is like one story and then the second half of the book is like a completely different story and I was really angry in the beginning of the book and in the middle of the book I was very confused and I loved like the last paragraph was like a super twisty ending that I really loved. It deals with some things like mental illness and some people felt like it was kind of a cop-out and it was a shining a negative light on mental illness. For me who suffers from anxiety and depression or lives with anxiety and depression, I don't know if you're like, I live with anxiety and depression, I feel like for me it wasn't, I don't always necessarily care if if a mental illness is looked at in a negative light because not all people live well with mental illnesses. There are people that have a mental illness and live very horribly with it. So to me it makes it realistic. I didn't think it was unrealistic in any way. I think that everything that happened was completely plausible and possible and so I just I really liked it. I'm a person who prefers true crime over fictional crime because true crime is typically weirder and way less believable than fictional crime which is weird to say but absolutely true. Yeah there were definitely some things in it that made me question the realness of it but I did enjoy it. The next book we're going to talk about is In the Key of Niragani by Natasha Dean. This book is about a girl named Niragani and she is a high schooler. Her parents are immigrants from Guyana. They want Nira to go to school, be a doctor, be a lawyer, be something of that sort. Um, Nira is more musically inclined. She has a trumpet. She wants to play trumpet as a way to make money and to live her life and so they kind of have that clashing head syndrome thing and it just is a story about Nira trying to find herself and make her parents understand why music is so important to her. I gave this a four out of five stars. It sung to my band nerd heart. I loved all of the discussion of music and the way that music makes you feel and how music can impact people. As someone who's very musically inclined that was it hit me in the right way. A slower moving book but still really good. I loved the characters. The grandma especially was super wonderful. I loved the grandma character. She was a lot of fun. I liked the diverse viewpoint because again it is someone who has immigrant parents and it's also interesting that uh, Nira's parents moved here as refugees at a time when the only way to move out of the country was to give up everything you had and to leave and her cousin, her dad's brother's family, came a little later on and they were able to keep their money and things when they came. So Nira's family is um, not super poor but definitely in the lower end of middle class whereas her cousin's family lives very upper class and so it's interesting to see that even the immigrant standpoint is two different sides of that coin as well. 
and you see two different lifestyles and two different it's two different viewpoints of a different viewpoint if that makes sense. This is a very heavy character driven story. I really loved it. Honestly the thing that keep, kept this from being higher for me is there is a scene at the end that is a medical scene and something happens that is not how real life happens. There's like a medical procedure that they're doing that is just way wrong and I couldn't I just it took me out of the story like it took me I'm not someone with a medical background and I know that what they did wasn't right and I even looked it up to make sure that I wasn't crazy and it was not how things happen and so for me it taking me out of the story knocked down some points but overall I really enjoyed it. The next book is Next Year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. This book follows a dual timeline so it follows a grandmother in the early years of Fidel Castro's Cuba and the granddaughter in modern day 2017 I believe is when it follows the granddaughter and it follows their viewpoints of Cuba and just all of the different political aspects of it and everything that happens. Both of them have a romance plot, subplot, and is very political and heavy in societal issues. I gave this a four out of five stars. This was the book club book for January for my local bookstore. So I read the book and then I actually read it on Tuesday and then sat down with the girls to discuss it on Wednesday. I was very behind <laughs> but I actually sat down and we discussed a, different, a lot of different things about it and it is one of the first ever like in-person book clubs that I've ever done. I really enjoyed it. I think there were things about the book that I didn't really notice that after having discussed it I was like oh that makes sense which is why I love discussing books so much because you get other people's perspectives which then changes your perspective maybe for the better or the worse but it it seeing how other people see things definitely changes your perspective of it. And at the beginning of this book I really liked the modern day and didn't like the past so much but as the story went on it definitely flipped. I didn't love the romance in the modern day. The romance in the past was very good. One of my very first notes that I wrote down in my reading journal about this book was this book is going to hurt me and it did. I cried which is not to say anything because I cried everything but yeah definitely hurt me in a in a in a good way I think. It's very political as I said it has a lot to do with the politics and society issues in Cuba. The way that different people feel about it. The modern day character Marisol is has lived her whole life in Miami and is going back to Cuba to um, lay her grandmother to rest. Uh, her grandmother Eliza lived in Cuba until they were exiled when Fidel Castro took over and so it, it kind of discusses the difference between people that left Cuba and the people that stayed behind um, when Fidel Castro took over and it talks a lot about just everything that happened and I learned a lot which for me is interesting because I love history books anyway and so I learned a lot of things that were you know it made me want to do research and I was looking up places on Google Maps and tr like trajectorizing like walks to places and different things and just got really into it despite the fact that I had very little time to do so. But it was a very interesting book. I really enjoyed it. There is one one flag so you know I must read it. This is this is the one. I shake my head understanding what was missing before. Why I couldn't come up with a final resting place that felt right. It wasn't a place. It was a person. That's the part where I started sobbing in the car. There are a lot of things in this book that were really really amazing and heartfelt and hurtful but there's also a lot of things that talk about things politically that I enjoyed. I think I've said things a thousand times. It was good. I liked it. Y'all should read it. Next we have Renegades by Marissa Meyer. This book is about a girl named Nova who is technically a anarchist which means she's a supervillain and the world is run by the renegades who are superheroes. There is like this whole backstory about how the main anarchist was upset that people with superpowers were being 
treated unfairly. So his answer to that was to kill all of the government people and police officers and just everybody, just take them out. And then the renegades came and kind of put a stop to that. And the renegades have since taken over and they are basically the new government and they try to keep the supervillain gangs from destroying the world again. And it follows Nova infiltrating the renegades so that she can destroy them from the inside, but things are not always what they seem. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars, which was a very popular rating this month, if you can't tell. This book has a lot of my super favorite things. It has societal issues, it has a found family aspect, it has superheroes and supervillains, it has a huge twist ending. There's a mystery plot, there is kind of like a thriller aspect to it. This book has a lot of things, which it should because it's a chunky baby. I loved it highly recommend. There's just a little bit of a romance plot that I loved. There is just the found family aspect of it. There's so much for Nova. As a character she has such a horrible background and I think throughout this book she flips back and forth a lot on the kind of person that she wants to be and the kind of person that she needs to be to change the world the way that she wants the world to change. I think that at some point she's gonna have to find a middle ground in that but it was interesting to see her character f completely flip back and forth. Very waffle situation. And the other main character Adrian I think is very similar in the aspect that he, you know Nova grew up as like the main focus of the anarchists whereas Adrian grew up as one of the he is literally the child of the people that founded the renegades so he's always grown up with renegades in his brain and so these two people are on complete opposite ends of the spectrum but I think if they can work together that maybe they will create a better world but I don't know because I've only read the first book there's two more they're already out everybody has probably already read this book but if you haven't and you like superheroes found families, etc, etc, etc. Read this book. And finally, we are going to be talking about Capturing the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the fourth and final book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. Stalking Jack the Ripper follows a girl by the name of Audrey Rose Wadsworth, whose basic life goal is to study forensics and to help solve crimes. And Audrey Rose does this with the help of her uncle who also studies forensics and is basically a coroner for lack of a better term. And he studies dead bodies trying to figure out what happened to the bodies and they start studying the Jack the Ripper cases. Audrey Rose lives in a time period where it is very frowned upon A for women to have jobs but definitely for women to have jobs slicing open dead bodies. I have so many reviews for these books on my channel. I think I have a full review for every book in this series sans this one and I will link them down below if I can find whichever ones I have. I will definitely link them below if you're interested. The series is a romance. It's got Audrey Rose and her love interest who is so amazing. It's got all of the banter, all of the shenanigans, it's got crime, it's got mystery. There's a little bit of baby, bit of steampunk in the first book. Each book follows a different crime throughout history which is in our history. Carrie did change up some of the dates to kind of make things work better for the time flow of the books but she did a lot of research. I really enjoy reading the author's notes in the backs of these and seeing what all Carrie changed and what Carrie kept and how she did the research process of it. I enjoy that fact a lot because I'm a nerd and that's how I roll. This final book I gave a full five stars. I love the characters in this so much. I have been on this journey for a long time since the first book came out. It's one of the few books that I can say that I've actually read as the books have come out. Most things I'm very far behind on but this series I've read from the beginning and I have loved every minute of it. It has so much heartbreak. I cried, I sobbed, I felt physically ill from the description of the heartbreak in this. I laughed, I swooned, God did I swoon. I just have so much love for this series. It is one of my favorites of all time. I highly recommend it to anyone that likes historical fiction or crime novels or forensics or Sherlockian type deductions or women who don't give a fuck. Whatever it is, if you're into any of those things, highly recommend the series. I just fucking love it.
So there are four of the five books that I read in the month of January. If you have read any of these and you would like to discuss them or if you have any questions about any of them, please hit me up in the comments section down below. There will be a whole list of links in the description box for you. Don't forget you can also find me on social media and on Goodreads and Instagram and Twitter and all of that good stuff that's all linked down below as well. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos on Mondays and Wednesdays and bonus videos on the weekends. So if you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you subscribe. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!